YouTube. Today we're in Job 35, 36, and 37. We hear from Elihu. Tomorrow we hear from God, his response. So like, subscribe, and share. Read ahead. Join me tomorrow as well. Write and underline in my Bible. But in Job it's difficult to do because there's so many truth nuggets. There's so much piecemealing of the Bible. You know when somebody takes a verse out of the Bible and misuses it or they use it out of context, something like that. There's a lot of that in Job. Truth Nuggets, friends, and Elihu today just give a small perspective or an ancient Near East perspective of what was taking place, an early human perspective. We are given a biblical perspective. We hear, we see, and read the entire Word of God. So Job 35, Elihu corrects Job for previously saying, what's the use of living a righteous life? Uh, we oftentimes ask ourselves this question. Satan tempts us with these thoughts. Joyce Myers has written a whole book, Battlefield of the Mind. We're told to take each thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So continue to move forward. It's easy to say, God will forgive me of this, or God will never know. Flip side of that coin, Elihu speaks today about the truth of your suffering and your pain and your shortcomings in life. Verse 33 and following says, But it is wrong to say that God doesn't listen, to say that the God, God Almighty isn't concerned. He will bring justice if you only wait. Uh, now that may be in this life or the next. Continue to seek God. Continue to be in prayer. Continue to be in God's Word. Truth and peace milling of the heart of God. Continue in Job 36, we see Elihu, he says, let me go on and I'll show you the truth for I've not finished defending God. We see people say happy holidays and then somebody else says, Merry Christmas. They they don't respond with the same saying. Uh, yes, we are supposed to share as believers, but God doesn't need you to defend him. And Elihu saying, I'm gonna defend God. Do you think you're gonna convert someone by if someone says happy holidays to you and you say in a pious way, Merry Christmas, uh, the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts. The Holy Spirit is the one that converts. Don't get me wrong. Elihu is zealous about his beliefs in God. But you can be zealous and you can be wrong. Many cults are this way. Verse 4, I'm telling you nothing but truth, for I am a man of great knowledge, Elihu says. Uh, I'm a know-it-all, essentially. Remember yesterday, be, be quick to listen, slow to speak. Verse 10, 30, chapter 36, verse 10 says, uh, He, being God, gets their attention and commands that they turn from evil. True believers, yes, the Holy Spirit convicts. But Romans 1 says that he abandons some to their selfish desires. If you continue down a road of evil, he will abandon you to your selfish desires. Verse 11 and following, if they listen and obey God, all their years will be pleasant. Sounds like Elihu's theology is a little shallow. It sounds like Elihu hasn't been through much in his life. Divorce, loss of a child, loss of a job, poor health, childless, etc. Next he goes on uh, into the godless will be punished. And that's not true either. I know plenty of godless people that have a pretty cushy life. They're actually some of the hardest people to witness to. But Elihu says they'll die by the sword. They'll die when they're young. Verse 21, uh, he warns Job in the verse prior and says, uh, God has sent his suffering to keep you from a life of evil, which wasn't at all the case. Again, Elihu or the other buddies, or even Job for that matter, weren't aware of the initial meeting between God and Satan. 37, Job 37, Elihu still speaking. A little foreshadowing of tomorrow's Devo. In verse two and three, he says, listen carefully to the thunder of God's voice as it rolls from his mouth. It rolls across the heavens and his lightning flashes in every direction. And continuing in 37, he continues to speak of God's majesty, of power, Elihu ends, or chapter 37 ends, with some of these nuggets of truth. In verse 23, we cannot imagine the power of the God of the Almighty. And the end of 24 says, all who are wise show reverence to him. 
Um, again, we can't know everything about God, but we are blessed because we live in a time where we do have a perspective from the entirety of the Bible. We know what Jesus did and what he's doing and what he's going to do. We know life from a cross perspective, from a resurrected perspective, from a grace perspective. Tune in tomorrow and we will hear God speak starting in chapter 38. If this has been a blessing to you, like, subscribe, and share.